In this video, we're actually going to talk about IoT and what IoT means, because it's a word that's thrown around a lot. So let's get into what IoT really means, the Internet of Things. When you actually take a look into IoT, there's really only four aspects that exist in the world. There's machine to analytic. This means I just want to see what's going on on the sensor. This could be my thermostat. I want to know the temperature of my house. This could be how fast my car is going. This could be where find my iPhone is on the planet. I just want to know what's going on. A lot of different industries just have that. Not necessarily a big data problem, just a, I want to know where this thing is and what it says. Temperature, pressure, sensor, etc. The next one is machine to machine. This is the idea where two machines are talking to each other. And I know people are thinking futuristic, but this has actually been around since the 80s. In the shop floor, you had a belt and you had an arm. The arm broke, the belt stopped, the belt broke, the arm stopped. Been around forever. Now what's different with IoT is this. It's become cheaper. Previously, that was a controlled system with two things that were super expensive. Now that the sensors are cheaper and both can be internet connected, you can do it much cheaper. But the side benefit is you could actually have two things from two different manufacturers work together, meaning your coffee maker can actually be triggered from your alarm clock. Your alarm clock goes off, it starts your coffee maker. Made by two separate companies, but guess what? Putting a sensor in each device is like 10 cents each. So it's easy to do where you're like, well, what's the value of my coffee maker going off? I don't know, it's a little bit easier. Not like game changing or gonna change the world, but it's just a nice to have convenience and it's cheap enough to do so. We've just made M to M a little bit more scalable overall. The third scenario is what I call machine to data lake. Now this one's fun because you say, okay, the world is generating XYZ more information than it ever has in the past because there's sensors and everything. And if you don't collect everything, you are completely screwed because you will never be able to do IoT. This is the way you approach anybody. And you go buy Hadoop and you build a data lake. What problem are you gonna solve? Who knows, you just gotta collect everything. And then you should hire data scientists to go look at all this information and they'll find something wrong with your business. It's a fear-oriented sale, machine to data lake. And finally, you have machine to process. This is the scenario I talked about where, hey, part in your washing machine breaks, can you reorder the part by calling a business process procurement API? Or can you check if it's under warranty? It's just taking action based on some information off a sensor. And regardless of what industry you're in, whether you're sports or in entertainment, whether you're automotive, whether you're consumer products, this is it for IoT. You're doing one of these four things. And you might have a car that's doing all four, where you say, hey, how fast is the car going? If the car stops, let me notify another car, let interact with the traffic light. Let me collect all the information on the car so I can send it to R&D to build better parts. And by the way, if it gets into an accident, let me have a phone home system. So you have one car that actually is all four. But when you take a look at the technology, it's not more complicated than this. When you take a look at why you need a cloud platform to solve IoT challenges, it comes back to the technology baggage of I need analytics software and I need device management software and I need data streaming software and I need device management and device data interchange here and I need a data lake with Hadoop here to connect with devices and sensors and data collection and streaming and here I need APIs for business processes connecting to machines. You could go ahead and say these are all services in a platform on a cloud platform. So what you've done is you've made it easy to go ahead and deliver IoT scenarios by leveraging the cloud and the set of services you need to solve any individual problem you have in IoT. And that's why HANA Cloud Platform is unique because not only do we give you that technology like other IoT platforms, we also have the APIs to take action on information coming off these sensors because most enterprise data is sitting in an SAP application. And we have APIs and security from device through back office system with our IoT capabilities.